I think that's part of the North American game day experience and I, I think it's quite fun. I think a lot of people who went to the game, even some Rovers fans and, and stuff like that I've seen on social media, commenting positively on all that sort of jazz. So, um, so I yeah, uh, but, they are, but they are a dirty team. Let's, let's not yeah, get too far away from that. Yeah, if you watch um, American sport, you kind of expect to get that, don't you? A little bit, yeah. We, um, we went to see um, a basketball match when we were over there when Peter was working over there and I went out to stay and um, all of a sudden this bell started dinging and everyone jumped up and ran out of the arena and we had no idea but it was because um, the Oakland State Warriors who we were there watching had scored 100 points and then it's free hot dogs. <laughs> so there you go. There you go, yeah. Um, what did you make of the of the action on the field? Because I... I... I watched this one, but not with full attention on it that on Sunday morning. So I think you watched some of it, did you? Yeah, I watched most of it on Saturday night, I think. Um, one thing, is the referee mic'd up for the crowd to hear in the Toronto matches? I don't think so. I just think the way it's put through to the TV footage is different to the right. way I do it. it obviously, it, Sky aren't the host broadcaster by any stretch over there. No, it's just... A totally different uh, it company. just um, yeah, there was a lot of hate. Not that it was bad hearing him, it was just, yeah, unusual. Well, it's like the Catalan game. Usually on the Catalan feed, we hear the referee louder as well, don't we? Yeah, yeah, that's probably all it is. Yeah. Um, Craig Hall, again, played very well like he did against us. He did. He seemed to be making a lot of breaks. He found a lot of space in the game and he scored that uh, really crucial interception try, which yeah. um, kind of... St- Gave gave the first lead of the game to the the whole Kingston Rovers side. Yeah, um, yeah. It was it was an entertaining match. It was you know you weren't quite sure which way it was going to go. Um, Rovers just seemed that fraction faster, more clinical better organised do you think a part of that was the fact that there was this injury that happened to Blake Wallace um, in the first half of the Wolfpack which upset their creative positions whereas experience of people like Quinlan and um, and Maguire and the quality that we've seen from Atkin, young Atkin this year kind of counteracted that well and Tommy Lee uh, but of course yeah counteracted that well for the Rovers. They, they had the advantage there after that injury to Blake Wallace? Possibly. Although, I mean, um, you know, you look at the Toronto team and it's just a team full of people names that you know. Um, I just don't know whether you can have that many name, old names playing together successfully. Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I mean, As Sims in- and Sidlow and Whiting, they've been around for donkeys years now haven't they Patterson as well uh, playing against yeah. hit one of his former sides in this game yeah I, I, t- I do take on board what you're saying yeah as in they've got the experience but can you have that many people with that much experience or do you need you know your few Tommy, your, your yeah. guys, Tommy Lee your Atkins to actually take the game is it a case of too many cooks spoiling the broth well look at how old look at how old the uh, Rovers team was though Nick Scruton Joel Tompkins, Danny Tickle. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it was a pair of old teams. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you, like you say, it was just a little bit more class and precision from, from the Rovers in the end. And they took what they did do really well is took advantage of any opportunities they were given to. Um, there was a little bit of controversy. Everyone blew up about a penalty that was given from... Was it from the short restart? Yes, there was one, wasn't there? It didn't stick out so bad to me that it needed to have such an uproar. It was one of those decisions that I think James Child makes. He he sees the danger element before he sees the did it really happen how I saw yeah, it? He just he just thinks it could have been dangerous, so I think I saw yeah. it worse than I really did and he, he blows penalties yeah. and that's kind of part of what his makeup is and Yeah, Richard Whiting was done for taking the player out in yeah. the air when actually I think Richard Whiting was simply standing there and the player sort of came down yeah. and caught him. Yeah, and Ch- Child tends to lean towards that it was dangerous 
rather than the what really good. happened kind of yeah. thing if the result was dangerous let's penalize it and or if the results appeared to be dangerous let's let's penalize it which i, I don't have a huge huge problem with um but that's probably because i'm a, a softie who never played the game as well yeah i mean i think i think ultimately it was the wrong decision but it's a it wrong a decision. Tough decision yeah you know it was one wrong decision I think he on the hurl had a pretty good match you know he he did stop you know he did penalize a lot that needed penalizing and he did keep control of the match and he put Toronto onto a team warning and yes of course telling them you know that's three in a row sort yourselves out and then well that's four in a row and you're on a team warning now yeah, I thought he controlled things reasonably well as well. And I certainly think that Hulk Hogan was just slightly slightly better, slightly slightly more polished. So so well done. Yeah, I think, you know, a one-score victory is probably about a fair result. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Okay. Um, last game then. London. Millions of points in this game. <laughs> or 80. London Broncos hosted the Leeds Rhinos on Sunday afternoon and this game finished 48 points to 32 in favour of the visitors. They had a commanding 28 points to 6 lead at half time so that's where the damage was done. That means London actually won that second half 26-20. 1,793 which is a relatively good crowd but probably less than they were hoping for down at the Ealing Trailfinders. Chris Kendall was the referee. Do you want to give us the first fan review? Yep, Rich Wilkinson said, a win is a win, but the way Leeds clocked off is embarrassing. When you take into account the last 20 minutes, the team attitude is a fucking jerk. I would be putting the broom through the place at the end of the season. Leeds need to lose half a dozen players and get a quality coach. Dr. Hideous gives the flip side of that. He says, what a pathetic, error-strewn shit show. 65 minutes gone, 34 points down, and only then do the Broncos think about playing the sort of rugby that got us into the top two in the championship. But by then, I was so grumpy that I decided the best bit was when a small child cried at the terrifyingly anthropomorphic horse mascot. (laughs) Well, that's kind of you, isn't it? Um, Paul Chamberlain says, putting aside the obvious com- com- comments, Kieran Dixon put in one of the worst performances I've seen. It made his Challenge Cup final appearance look like prime Billy Slater, completely useless and a liability against b- better opposition. On the flip side, Hein Marsh will be playing Super League within 18 months and internationals shortly after. He is a monster. Do you know what? I do think he's got the potential to step up to Super League. He's impressed me uh, when I've seen him a couple of times this year. Uh, he's definitely you know, and he's young enough to shape and mould and, and develop a little bit more and I think if I'm right he scored one of their sort of late late tries in their late sort of comeback I listened to most of this game on yeah he did he scored uh, one of those tries in that comeback I listened to most of this game on the radio but really I didn't pay it great attention after the first uh, the first half Joel Moon scored that 14 minute hat trick really quick hat trick for him Kieran Dixon was probably it sounded like at fault for all three of those tries. He did make up for it by getting a try back himself, but it wasn't wasn't really enough. Um, and uh, yeah, Ashton Golden had a good game in defence. He pulled off a few try savers and then bounced uh, back to it up the other way when he scored a couple of tries. One of them was an eight point try for a, a penalty on him in the act of scoring. So right. um, so he, he did it tough as well. Did uh, Ashton Golden so so credit to him? He was probably one of the players that it sounded like uh, had a really good game for the Rhinos. That's good. Okay. We were uh, we were at a trampolining um, exhibition open day thing, so didn't follow this particularly. I, yeah, I think mo- most of us kind of wound down after that that first half anyway and switched our attention over to the Bradford against Workington game that we will get to in the other results after you've told us what the standings are in the qualifiers yep so Salford are top and leads a second both two from two Wolfpack win, lead the one win teams on points difference ahead of Toulouse Hull KR and London Witness and Halifax have no points from two games uh, in terms of the predictions Super Rude Dream Team updates uh, in the predictions Sarah I'm afraid that your uh, your Hull FC count uh, friend Rich 
did not do you any favours. I went 6 out of 8, he went 5 out of 8. That means the cumulative now. Uh, I am 2 ahead of you as the co-host. So uh, work to be done. Certainly you can't overcome that this week. So don't, don't worry about, don't worry about any pressure on you in that regard. <laughs> In the Subaru, Hutch stays top. He's been top for a long time now. Lee Pennington, though, wears the yellow cap, so well done to Lee. In the Dream Team, Alan Bagley, similarly commanding like Hutch has been in the Subaru. He holds on to his long reign at the top spot. But Karen Chown, she had the best weekly score of 660. She is really doing well in these Super 8s. Um, it's Karen, so well done to her. That is all of the big games covered in great depth across the Super 8s. Uh, Super League, Super 8s and the qualifiers we're now going to look at other results from around the world of Rugby League Other results now sponsored by jkmartwork.com check out jkmartwork.com where you can buy prints, canvases and more of James's stadium paintings all UK Super League clubs are covered and a couple of clubs outside Super League too as well as football, grounds, cricket uh, grounds and more JKM Artwork can help you find the perfect gift for the sports fan in your life ok it was the Championship Shield round 2 um, it finished Swinton and Rochdale will be absolutely kicking themselves. Both were in leading positions in these games again and let it slip. Uh, it was Swinton 18, Sheffield 26 and Rochdale 24, Featherstone 33. Lee were big winners over Barrow, 38 points to nil and Batley, similarly in the millionth heavy woolen derby of the season, finished 42-22 uh, in that one. The table order is Lee, Featherstone, Batley, Sheffield, Dewsbury, Barrow, Swinton, Rochdale. Although everyone from Batley Down is theoretically in reach, for Sw in reach for Swinton and Rochdale, they are seven points off safety with only five games to go. Um, they can't keep throwing away opportunities like they have done in the last two weeks, both of those sides. Into League One, where it was round 22. And uh, we start with Hemel nil, North Wales 50. Whitehaven 14, Doncaster 23. Another League One game of the week where we haven't had any reviews. And I know that someone was at this game who, know, who, who sometimes gets in touch with the show, Ethan O'Gorman. Um, York 48, Hunslet 6. West Wales 18, Coventry 22. So that's West Wales' most... Probably most um, competitive outing of the year. So well done to those guys there. An exciting... Yeah. Sorry, I was just going to say, how many have Coventry won in a row now? Uh, not not in a row. Oh, they had... Did they lose one in between? Yeah, that's, well, they played Doncaster, didn't they? They were in a great yeah. run of form. So, so that was a, uh, one they couldn't overcome. And they were away at York as well, weren't they, last week? But oh, gosh, yeah. uh, outside of that, they have really done well in, in, in the last six eight weeks or so newcastle beat oldham 24 points to 18 so a big win in the northeast there for them and oldham's uh, promotion push hits the skids a little bit and then the game of the round really I, I don't know why we didn't pick it out after what happened uh, we just expected bradford to win but it didn't come come to pass to be that way bradford 18 workington 24 and we had a review on this one sarah Yep, Shoddy and Munger, Alan said, we have to be able to rise above the niggling tactics that teams will try with us. Four points dropped to Workington is dreadful. If York stay top, they will richly deserve to be champions. Yeah, um, I mean, it, it was a very exciting game that, that Workington were able to cling on to in the end. In fact, they did they found themselves in good field position a few times towards the end of the, of the game, actually. The, the uh, Bradford side were pushing the luck a little bit maybe to try and get back into the game and they, they couldn't do so York move top on 40 points and carry a plus 38 points difference advantage too now uh, over second place Bradford who are on 38 points Workington a third on 32 Doncaster fourth on 30 Oldham a fifth on 28 Hunslet sit just outside the playoff spots also on 28 but with a considerably worse points difference than Oldham Whitehaven have 26 Keithley and London have 22 North Wales have 15 Coventry move on to 12 so there we talked about their, their good good mm. season Scholars, Hemel and West Wales make up the table into the Women's Super League there was two games played this weekend um, we start in St Helens where it finished St Helens 10 Wigan Warriors 14. Gemma Walsh inspired her troops to a win on the road to make it two out of two in the derby this year for them. Uh, and it was York 8, Bradford 38. Uh, so yeah. things are getting close and exciting at the top of that table, Sarah. 
Hull FC ladies won again against Barra. They had a really good win, um, and it looks like they'll be in the playoffs. Yeah, we we don't touch too much on the the championship because it's hard to get. 